we were just talking about how to add with vector components. The point here is that vectors add like scalars only when they're parallel, right? When a vector is parallel to another vector, those two vectors look the same, but it doesn't matter, that they add together, we can add them like scalars when they're parallel. If this vector has a magnitude of A and this vector has a magnitude of B, then the sum vector um, has a magnitude of A plus B because they're parallel. Remember, those, the, the, what I just drew were magnitudes. If I wanted to draw a vector, let's say that this is vector D1, which has a magnitude of A in the I direction, and vector T2, which has a magnitude of B in the J direction. Right? The sum of the magnitudes is A plus B, and that's going to be the magnitude of the sum vector. Right? The sum, um, so D, the magnitude of the sum vector, D1, plus d2 is equal to well oh, here I didn't I didn't write those words is magnitude of the sum vector um, <clears throat> I know my words are a little out of order but anyway so it's gonna be a oh you caught the mistake right I did it again this vector d2 is still in the x direction it's not in the y direction it's still in the x direction um, so b i so we've got a i plus b i, which equals a plus b i. Because they're both in the same direction, we can uh, factor out that, that vector i, that vector that says points in the x direction, um, and the sum vector d1 plus d2, right, that's resultant d. adds like they were scalars. Okay, so uh, I've said that a million times now, well, at least three, um, that, uh, that vectors add like scalars when they're parallel, but when they're perpendicular, they don't. Whoops. So one more time, right, when they're perpendicular, well, no, when they're at an angle relative to each other, it doesn't have to be perpendicular, when they're at some angle relative to each other, they don't add like scalars. So if the first vector, now again, I'm just going to draw the magnitudes A and B. I won't bother writing out the whole notation and say what's the magnitude of the resultant vector, resultant sum, resultant. When we talk about a resultant vector, it means the sum. Resultant means the sum. So the magnitude of the resultant vector is not A plus B. So the uh, magnitude of the resultant is not A plus B because my two vectors that make up the resultant are not parallel. So again, vectors that are parallel add like scalars. Vectors that are not parallel, you cannot add them like scalars. You have to take components before you can add them. So that's what the, we had just done in class was taking was adding vectors that had components. Um, we didn't we didn't do an example of taking components of a vector. We took a, took two vectors that were already in component form and added them. So let's just take the components of a vector. So let's go ahead and just figure out how to take uh, components of a vector. We already talked about it, but let's go ahead and do an example, I guess. Um, if we have a vector, let's say um, my bunny rabbit or my jackalope. So I don't know if I remember that right, but let's take the jackalope. It went 17 meters at 30 degrees um, north of east or up from the x-axis, whatever. And let's say we want to take the components of this jackalope's vector. What do we do? So we draw it on a coordinate system, we put its tail at the origin, we drop two perpendiculars, one perpendicular line to the x-axis, one perpendicular line to the y-axis, and that defines a box which, uh, if we draw a line, I'll just change the color here, we draw a line uh, from the origin along the x-axis, that gives me the x-component, draw a line from the origin along the y-axis, that gives us the y-component, so now we've got the uh, vector d in terms of its components dx and dy, dx and dy are the magnitudes of those components, so that d is the sum of the two vectors along the x-direction, dx in the x-direction, plus dy in the y-direction. <clears throat> so, so we've now drawn a picture of the components, and then how do we know what dx and dy are? Right, We know what dx and dy are from our geometry of a right triangle and the Pythagorean theorem. Notice that dy, the, the vector component in the y direction, can be moved over from the axis to make a right triangle. And so I'm going to just redraw dy over here, dy, and dx is down here. So let me take that triangle and just redraw it just to make sure we see it. 
um, we've got 30 degrees, we've got 17 meters, we've got dx, and we've got dy. So now this is a triangle which where we're just going to do geometry on this triangle. So if we want to find dy and dx, there's a number of ways you can do it. We can use Soka, Toa, and the Pythagorean Theorem. Uh, I'm just going to write down sine of the angle. The sine of the 30 degree angle is the opposite, which is dy over the hypotenuse with 17 meters. Cosine of the angle 30 is the adjacent, which is dx over um, the hypotenuse, right? Ka, cosine of the angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Uh, I've written those two down. You could also write down the tangent. You could also write down the Pythagorean theorem. It is not necessary, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. So you can use all four of these equations, but the easiest ones are to, to use are the two equations we wrote down initially, just solve for dx and dy. So plugging those into my calculator, I get d, or plugging, taking the sine of 30 degrees and multiplying it by 17 to solve for dy, I get 8.5 meters, and solving for dx, I get 14.7 meters. So my triangle looks like this, and I can go ahead back and now think of this as a vector and write the vector in terms of its components. So the magnitude direction form was 17 meters 30 degrees up from the plus x axis or counterclockwise from the plus x axis and the component form is 14.7 meters in the x direction plus 8.5 meters in the y direction either one of these formats works um, and now we've just figured out how to go back and forth between a magnitude direction form and component form so i'm having trouble finding a good joke i'm not a a good, I don't have a good memory for jokes. I come across this one on the internet, which is a very bad joke. So uh, it was, what question can you never answer yes to? And the answer was, what does N-O spell? I don't even get it. Because you can't answer yes to what does I-D-I-O-T spell either. Anyway, okay. Well, how about this one? What do scientists use to freshen their breath? Experiments. Uh, I don't get it. Well, I do get it, but... Uh, there's got to be better jokes out there. So one thing a student asked me at the end of class on Wednesday that I think is worth reviewing um, is uh, basically how to use a calculator properly. Um, there's a couple of things that, that that's not a stupid question at all. Uh, first of all, we are when we're doing these uh, kinds of Soka Toa, um, you know, um, like like the problem we just did. Uh, when you're using angles on your calculator, you gotta make sure your calculator is in degrees, not radians. So often we use radians for a lot of things, especially if you're taking a math course, and we will later on in this course. But so you gotta make sure you're using degrees, not radians. So your calculator should be. In addition, we did a uh, we did a different kind of problem where we were going from the components to the magnitude direction form where we didn't know the angle. And how do you put that into your calculator? Let me write down an example. Let's say I gave you this triangle. Let's say that we had the bu the bunny vector or the jackalope vector um, went in uh, a different direction, 17 meters, and I gave you the components. 10. I didn't give you the other one. Well, let's just go ahead and figure it out as an exercise. Uh, let's say I just gave you this. said, what is the other component of the vector, of the displacement vector, 17 meters? And by the way, let me do an aside. These can be any kind of vectors. They can be velocity vectors, acceleration vectors, force vectors. They can be any kind of vector. And this all holds. It's for any vector quantity that we represent as with a magnitude and direction. We've just been doing distances. We can do velocities, accelerations, etc., and we will. We've just been talking distances. Nothing changes when we change the type of vector. Anyway, so we want to find the components. We can actually use the Pythagorean theorem. Let me erase what I was, was about to be a square root. We can use the Pythagorean theorem to say, hey, we don't know what the x component is, dx. I gave you the y component. Um, and we can say, well, the magnitude of d squared d squared is equal to dx squared plus dy squared. Um, so therefore, uh, 17 meters squared equals dx squared plus 10 meters squared. And so therefore, dx is equal to 13.7 meters. Okay, let me point out one problem here, which is my scale diagram was terrible because I drew it as if dy was longer than dx, but dx turned out to be longer than dy. So that's fine, um, but I did draw it wrong. Um, <clears throat> okay, so, and then what is theta? That's what I was getting at, is how to use your calculator to find theta. Well, in this case, we can do sine, cosine, or tangent. 
because you know all three sides now, but if we use the two sides that we were given, um, and we want to write theta in terms of the two sides that we were given, we are given the side that's opposite to theta and the side that's hypotenuse to theta. So that would be so, so katoa, S-O-H, right? So um, that means, whoops, uh, that the sine of the unknown angle is equal to 10 meters over 17 meters. And so how do we solve for that unknown angle? So the correct terminology here is in order to solve for theta, we have to take what's called the inverse sine of each side. The inverse sine, which is the uh, sine with a negative one, inverse sine. So the inverse sine of a sine just gives you the angle. And we're taking the inverse sine of the left-hand side and the inverse sine of the right-hand side. 10 over 17. Notice that the meters cancels. It should be a unitless quantity, right? The, when you're taking the sine or cosine or, or tangent, it's got to be of a unitless quantity. So it's the inverse sine, and that's the function on the calculator, is the inverse sine. That's not 1 over sine. It's the inverse sine function, which is a function on your calculator. And my calculator gives me 36 degrees. <clears throat> 36 degrees. So the correct drawing for that particular vector was 17 meters, 10 meters, 36 degrees and 13.7 meters, 13.7 meters. So that was the correct drawing for that triangle, and we can write it out. Uh, we can write out components if we want, but anyway, I was just trying to do the geometry of that right triangle. We have the elusive jackalope has visited us. Um, it's kind of cute, but anyway, the, the jackalope will appear here and there because um, he's a good one to follow when we're doing vector, vector problems. Uh, he likes running in straight lines.